Hey everyone, it's Tira with Rent Mason Bees. Uh, it's the beginning of June and for the most part, our mason bees are pretty much done flying. If you see any mason bee activity, definitely leave your block out. Um, if you don't see any more mason bee activity and you have a block that's completely full or you have a block that's empty or partially full, um, just keep an eye on them. If you don't see any more mason bee activity, then it's safe to remove that nesting block very carefully because there's little larvae inside and store it with the holes upright. You're not mailing it back to us right now. You've got to wait for those little larvae to form the silk cocoon before you mail it back to us in September. Um, so again, depending on when you put your bees out, they're either done or they are still flying. Um, if you don't have any holes plugged, you guys, it's okay. I, I sent a newsletter out. Um, you can see that newsletter on our blog post under rentmasonbees.com under our blogs. I put all the information from newsletters to videos. Um, I have a whole little list of things you can do for a bee investigation to see uh, maybe why your holes aren't plugged. Maybe there's certain reasons. Maybe it was the weather. So if you check out our blog post under our website, you can reference that. Um, but for those that do have mud plugs, um, if your block is completely full, it's probably safe to take it out. You won't, well, you do want to take it out because there's no more space for them to lay babies. I had a host call me just yesterday saying, hey, I had all my holes plugged and today I went out and half of them are unplugged. And I asked her if she has any woodpeckers or birds with long beaks in her area and she does. And unfortunately, just like woodpeckers go peck in a tree, well, your nesting block is full of little food for them. So of course our birds are gonna get after them. So reference again, our blog post or our YouTube channel. I did a video on how to protect your bees from birds, what type of chicken wire to put up to protect them. Um, but if your block is completely full, go ahead and remove it. If you're still seeing mason bee activity, keep it out until you don't see any more mason bee activity. And you can swap your blocks to your leaf cutter bees. Um, leaf cutters come out when temperatures reach about 70, 75 degrees. So for some parts that's now, for some parts that's later on in July, August timeframe. Um, so you guys get to be the gauge, you guys get to be the bee moms and the bee dads to figure out when the best timing is to put out your leaf cutter bees. Leaf cutters don't go in the refrigerator, so you don't wanna stick them in there. Either put them out or store, Keep them stored safely in your garage. Um, if you want a um, video tutorial on how to remove your mason bee nesting block, um, you'll um, check out our, well, I'll just stick it in the links below. We have uh, how to swap the blocks video, but in that video, it also talks about how to remove and store your mason bee blocks uh, safely. Um, but today I wanted to take a sneak peek inside our nesting block. What are our baby bees doing? Are they in the larvae state? Have they formed a silk cocoon. As you've learned from all of our videos and our education, that mom bee goes in, she plugs it with mud, she lays a pollen loaf, and then she puts a little tiny egg, and then she caps it with mud. So then again, pollen, baby, mud, pollen, baby, mud. So in each mud plug, there's about five to seven babies in each um, hole that's plugged. Um, so I love to go in and I don't, we don't want you guys to do this. Don't cut your straps. Don't take a look at it because you need to safe, um, ship them safely back to us in September. Don't ship anything to us now. They are super fragile in the larvae state. If you don't have any mud plugs in your entire block, you would be surprised on how many blocks we get back that do have babies way, way back in the backside of the block. So don't get discouraged. You probably still have some activity going on in there. But for now, I wanna show you what your baby bees are doing. So let's open up our nesting block and take a look inside. Okay, come on. All right, let's take a look inside our mason bee nesting block to see what your baby bees are doing. Again, just to reiterate, please don't cut the straps and do this yourself. They are teeny tiny little fragile larvae in there and we need them to eat the pollen and then spin a silk cocoon for you to mail them back safely in September. All right, so this is our little scientific research so that we can share with all of you. You ready? All right, so we can see here, we have a plug, a plug, a plug, and then these three cells don't have plugs. So let's see what's going on inside. Oh, look at that. So those cells that didn't look like there was anything in them, look what's deep inside. 
baby larvae. Oh, and look at that, you guys. Oh gosh, I have to be super gentle and not shake the camera. Uh, hold on one second. Let me set this down very, very gently because there's babies in there. Okay, look at this. There are teeny tiny larvae eating the pollen loaf. Oh, I need to switch to my macro lens and get these little little bees up close. Oh, this is fascinating. So look at this cell, you guys. Look how many bees are in this cell. Now there's no cap at the front, so that means maybe, well, there's a cap there, but there's no cap right here, same here. And look how many cells are in here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Well, I said five to seven, but this bee was an overachiever. There's 13 cells in um, cells in there, so mud, pollen, baby. All right, let me switch it over to macro lens and show you these little babies up close. Okay, oh my gosh. Look at that little baby go, eating the little pollen that mom left. There's another one. Resting, it looks like. So as you can see inside the chambers, we have mud, pollen, baby, mud. And as I move down, you can see the ones in the back of the chamber are bigger than the ones that are in the front because the ones in the back have probably been that back there a couple days older, two or three days older than the ones that are in the front. So as I slowly move towards the front, oh, look at this little one. He's, he or she has made a hole in the pollen loaf. Looks like that one's resting too. It's a lot of work for these bees. There's another little one that's a scrunched up cell. They'll eat practically the entire loaf of pollen. They'll grow then into a chubby bee have enough energy to build a silk cocoon and then they'll metabolize that food that they've stored and it, it'll keep them alive until they're ready to emerge in spring of next year. Oh, look at that. So as you're moving, as I'm moving towards the front of the cell, you can see how much smaller they are than in the back because these ones are newer. They're laid just probably a few days ago. They start off as an egg and then they turn into a larvae state. So you can see it's not even touching the bottom because it's so tiny. It's just clinging to the pollen. So there you go, you guys. That is what your baby bees are doing. Is there one more as I scroll? Oh yes, look at this little tiny one. Oh my goodness, itty bitty. Let's see if we go one more. Yep. Is there one more? I think that's it. Yep. All right. That is what your baby bees are doing right now. Beginning of June, they're in the teeny tiny little larvae state, eating the pollen that mom left. So if you are able to remove your nesting blocks now and you see no more bee activity, this is why you have to be very, very gentle when you remove your nesting block from the black house. You're going to want to store with the holes up, the holes up inside your shipping box. They don't need to be in a temperature controlled space. They just need to be out of the elements of birds and mono wasp. You want to store them with the holes upright because then you're helping those little baby larvae sit on the pollen loaf. It helps them a little bit. And then they'll eat all of the pollen, spin a silk cocoon, and then that's safe to mail them back in September. So give us a call if you have any questions. I'll post links below on how to safely remove your mason bee block and store it. And please check out our YouTube channel and our website on our blog. I have a blog tab on our website where I share all sorts of information, videos, old newsletters, current stuff going on. Um, and you're always welcome to give us a call or send us an email if you have any questions. Thanks for hosting everyone. Bye.